Welcome to the What We Do channel. This is our first installment on a series of red wine making at home. Step one in winemaking, acquisition of grapes. Now, a lot of people don't realize, but here in Southern Ontario, we're right by a really good winemaking region. Um, we live on the North shore of Lake Ontario. Um, we drive around the lake and we come down into the Niagara winemaking region and we source our grapes right here by the Niagara River. It's a fantastic area for um, white grapes, but also wonderful red wine. They can, we can even get Cabernet Sauvignon ripe. I realize people don't think of Canada as a winemaking place, as a wine growing area, but this is a really great little region. And partly, it's the depth of this lake. Lake Ontario is 804 feet deep in its deepest point. Um, so that means when in the depth of our cold, cold winter, the ice never forms on the lake, maybe a little bit on the shoreline, but the lake itself stays open all winter long. And what happens, the wind blows from the northwest and it comes up against a, a, like a line of a ridge of land. You've heard of Niagara Falls. It's part of the same ridge that causes Niagara Falls. There's a ridge of land behind the lake. The air blows across the lake, is moderated by the, um, the warmth of the water in the winter, and it hits the, the escarpment, gets deflected back over the lake again, and comes back into the land, and this process goes back and forth, so that all through the winter, the, the temperatures are warmed. We have no problem with our latitude here. Um, we're actually at the same latitude as Chianti in Italy. It's just the deep, cold continental winters that cause a problem for grape growing. Wherever you are on this planet, it's important to try and get the best grapes you can find. Um, if you're in an area that has vineyards, fantastic. Try and find a local grape grower who will uh, sell some of his produce to you. I hear they're even growing grapes in England now. Every fall, they ship grapes east from California. So wherever you are in North America, you're sure to be able to find some good California grapes. This is Petite Syrah from California. Step two in red wine making is crushing and distemming. When I first started winemaking with grapes, I used a, a small Italian made machine. I hand cranked them and then I, I into a bucket and then I stemmed by hand. Um, as things got bigger, as they do, I soon realized we needed to motorize. Here you see us crushing a thousand pounds of grapes. We crush the wine into small buckets and I carry it down to the winery for fermentation. Once you have crushed and distemmed your grapes and put them into your primary fermenters, it's now called must. Step three is analysis of the must. The three things we test for are sugar, acid, and pH. I test for sugar in the must either using a digital or analog refractometer, or you can use a hydrometer. The hydrometer is also good during fermentation because once, once alcohol is into the must as the fermentation begins, these two things are no longer viable. The other thing I test for is acid and pH. I use this meter to test for those. In Ontario, generally our grapes tend to be a little bit low in sugar, so I add sugar to raise the bricks of the wine. Um, from grapes from California that I work with tend to be a little bit low in acid, 
So I add some acid to lower the pH, which increases the acid. Step four is going to be fermentation. The first thing I do is add a little bit of sulfite to the mast. Um, you want to stun the wild yeast so that the yeast you add later on will be able to take over and ferment the wine. Um, speaking of yeast, I'm looking for a wine yeast with a characteristic that I like for the style of wine I'm making. There are all kinds of choices out there. You've got to do a little bit of reading and choose the yeast or that is right for you and right for the wine that you're making. And talk to your grower if you can, and he probably has recommendations of the yeast you should be using. Um, also, I like to add enzymes to my red wine musts. The enzyme, I use one called HE Grand Cru, and it, it helps extract tannin and color from the skins. That really makes the wine suitable for uh, long-term aging and, and quality. Another thing, sometimes uh, the grapes lack a little bit in nutrients. They need some nitrogen for the yeast to really be able to work. So I do add a nutrient to my wine. I usually am aiming for about 40 parts per million of total um, nitrogen. Um, first, I add it prior to pitching my yeast, and I'll add another section of nutrients, the other half, when the wine is about uh, one third depleted in its sugar. We generally like to ferment our red wines for seven days on the skins. Um, every day you have to come to your, your wine and either with a very clean arm or a punch down device, punch the skins down into the wine so that the alcohol that's building up and the juice can extract color and tannins from the skins over time. Step five, pressing. After seven days on the skins, I like to press my reds. We like to get the press, the receiving carboys and the airlocks washed and sanitized the day before pressing because press day is a busy day. The first thing I like to do is take the cap off the top of the wine and put it into the bottom of the press. This will act as an, as an initial filter for the juice that I'm going to pour through the rest of the press. You might not believe this, but there are times at which there are torrents of wine coming through this press. Once the free-run juice has been collected in the carboys, I set the press up for hard pressing.
It took about an hour to press out these grapes. With a press like this, it's hard to overpress the fruit. So I like to collect my um, press juice and mix it in with the free run juice. Once the juice, or the now, new wine is all pressed, it's time, it's clean up time. The camera lady has a lot of work ahead of her. <laughs> Now the wine will quietly finish its fermentation in carboys. We'll show you the next steps in upcoming videos. Thank you for watching the What We Do channel and have a great day.